The same thing you've had reported with you throughout history. And I'm just coming back to that for a second because the Tic Tac kind of like performance is what we saw back in the 50s. It's the same thing, you know, standing from a standstill to instantaneously taking off in any direction or reversing its direction or making 90 degree turns. While some people would say, oh, okay, well, it's the, you know, the Russians have developed new technology or the, you know, the Chinese have got new technology. Did they have it back in the 50s? No. You know, did they have it in the 40s? No. Did they have it back in Roman times? I mean, if you want to call those like legitimate sightings as well. And there are well-documented cases of these things doing these kind of stuff back throughout history. So guess what? You know, it's nothing at all about anything that anybody's got on this planet. And they've come up and developed. Now, we are trying to build craft to be able to replicate it because that's what we like to do, right? Whoa! So Rich, um, you know, since then, of course, there's other videos that have come to light, like the Tic Tac. Did you guys go through that same rigorous uh, process with the Tic Tac as well? And maybe if you did, just a real brief rundown on what happened there. So yeah, we did. Uh, Robert Powell, uh, who's a part of us, and Robert early on got a chance to see the first article that came up about it. Uh, and, and, and so he really got into it and, and was starting to make connections with people about it. And, uh, and then I got on board and for example, and then I was able to identify some major players and make a connection and then match him up to some of those. And so we began doing interviews and after the whole time was up, we had interviewed about 18 witnesses to that event. Uh, and then plus we had the video that was obviously released, right? And, and, and so that was the only kind of like uh, information that we had. So we began doing the analysis of that. And right now we've got a 277 page paper up on our website where we broke and, and looked at the video. We looked at everything about the case, the, our interviews and stuff like that, that we did. We've got that broken into the report. Uh, we spent, uh, I wanna say probably about two years looking at that case, uh, we actually calculated the, some of the speeds that we saw. For example, in the video, you, you see this object that, that's up there that's got like a lock on, and you have to consider that the object was about 20 miles away from where the aircraft was, and that it broke the lock and then moves off quickly to the left. Well, again, considering 20 miles, that's a long ways away, but you've got that thing in that, that camera you're able to do some determinations in terms of that speed that was going on. And we found that it, it was going, you know, like about eight or nine G's, you know, I mean, that's a, that's still a lot, that's a lot right there when it's breaking its lock and moving to the left. And then at a certain point there, there ended up being multiple objects that we were attracting. And, but that, that was towards the end of the encounter and they all generally just kind of zoomed around at ridiculous speeds and, angles and trajectories and then eventually they all bugged out faster than our radars we, we were getting uh, what we call spot radar sightings where it would just catch a glimpse of it as it was moving because it was moving faster than our radar could register and then they were gone and you know we also considered the fact that kevin day was reporting that you know, the objects were descending from up in the air and at one point it was like about maybe twenty thousand feet altitude and that it dropped in 0.78 seconds and stopped above the water. Well, okay, if, if you did that kind of a calculation, what would the power output be from some object that we have, which is comparable in size to what that is? Okay, so the Tic Tac was about a little over like 40 feet maybe wide and a 13 feet high, that was the estimate. An F-18, and you knew the weight or the mass of that, and you said, well, what happens if you have that kind of a mass on that object and you dropped it and you tried to stop it in 0.78 seconds? Well, let me put it to the S way. The power was incredible. The speed was incredible. And you have to think about it. You know, you have to be accelerating and then immediately within just a matter of a few seconds, you've got to be decelerating to stop, right? To not hit the water. And that's the way we build things. And that's the way we look at things. 
This has no propulsion system that's visible on it. It, it, it just seems to be like this tic-tac shape, which is very unorthodox, if you would, for being anything in the air. Uh, and so, and it's not breaking any speed. I mean, a sound barrier, uh, you don't hear that. And yet it's making this drop. And then the power output, I think when we measured it in the report, you can see from the report, was the equivalent of the output that you'd be getting from in the way of power from the uh, like the Boulder Dam, you know. Right. <laughs> I mean, Rick, if you had a, a pilot in that, no, they would just uh, turn into jelly, wouldn't they? They, they, yeah, they would be a puddle. puddle. Yeah, they would be a puddle. And, and so you know, we this was like think of it like this: is somehow the mass was reduced to zero, and that there was actually no effect of being any kind of inertia that you would expect. And so going back to your point, if there was a pilot in it, that, well, they, like us, we would be dead, but they gotta be doing something to completely counter and reduce their mass to be able to experience that drop. And then plus it's an instantaneous start and stop. And there's nothing on earth, no technology on earth that we know of that could do anything of that kind of performance like you saw in that. An F-18 would have disintegrated with that kind of a drop. It would have been in pieces and fragments. The, the pilot would have been a puddle on the floor. And, uh, and so ultimately, you know, well, what could that be, right? And we just- So, so whatever, it's, whatever it is, it's manipulating the known laws of physics. Correct. The way to do these things, like it's, it's manipulating maybe gravity, maybe even time, space time. It's manipulating all kinds of things to be able to do these maneuvers safely. Yeah, so these, these things are, you know, performing, e even with the Aguadilla case and stuff like, you know, what do, what do you know that has, like, does cell division and mitosis or something like that, you know, and it divides into two. I mean, I don't, you know, they're, they're, these things are performing in ways that we don't understand uh, yet, maybe, and we don't have any kind of, like, we don't think like that. Uh, and, you know, and yet they're, they, that's the same, the same thing you've had reported with you throughout history. And I'm just coming back to that for a second because the tic tac kind of like performance is what we saw back in the 50s. It's the same thing, you know, standing from a standstill to instantaneously taking off in any direction or reversing its direction or making 90 degree turns. And so yeah. it's always been there. Yeah, I mean, and, the sighting I had in 1966 was the same. It changed direction in an yeah. instant without coming to a stop. Like in the flash of an eye, it was now going in the other direction. So you're right. It's right. been going on forever, right? Exactly. Which is, you know, while, while some people would say, oh, okay, well, it's the, you know, the Russians have developed new technology or the, you know, the Chinese have got new technology. Did they have it back in the fifties? No. You know, did they have it in the forties? No. Did they have it back in Roman times? I mean, if you want to call those like legitimate sightings as well. And there are well-documented cases of these things doing these kind of stuff back throughout history. So guess what? You know, it's nothing at all about anything that anybody's got on this planet. And they've come up and developed. Now, we are trying to build craft to be able to replicate it because that's what we like to do, right? But, I mean, it's going to take a while because we're still building with things with jet engines on them. I mean, it's, and, you know, and I, I go back to, this is kind of an interesting point for you, Rob. You know, these objects move, maneuver the same object, the same shape, the same tic-tac can go into the water and maneuver just with the same kind of speed and, and stuff like that, unscathed. Then it can pop up in the air and do that. And then it can go into space, okay? It, it would be able to fly in a, well, we can't have a submarine go up in the air and fly. We haven't been able to figure out how to do that and then to have that submarine and let's put it in space and expect it to fly. We don't do that.